Greetings to all architects, engineers, designers, builders, and all stakeholders in the built environment. And I'm truly grateful to having you here at All About Shelter. And you are now watching RA9266 Part 5. <laughs> well, now um, I will continue to discuss the remaining words that we have not touched from our previous videos under um, Section 3. Definition of Terms, Article 1 of the Architecture Act of 2004. Before we get into it, okay, allow me first to welcome you to our show at All About Shelters. And of course, I am your host, Architect Edric Marco C. Florentino. As we have been doing in the past short videos, uh, on RA 9266, I normally post on screen the word and its definition. Then I'll read the context, right? Now, from which I will be giving some short notes on the word or abbreviations. Um, that will be posting, of course, on the screen, all right? So, without further ado, I will be posting now on screen. Number five, structural conceptualization. Number five, structural conceptualization means the act of conceiving, choosing, and developing the type, disposition, arrangement, and proportioning of the structural element of an architectural work giving due consideration to safety, cost-effectiveness, functionality, and aesthetic. Now, before I expound on the word structural conceptualization, please allow me you know, to give a short trivia about the word structural conceptualization in the Architecture Act of 2004. Well, did you know that one of the many reasons why the word structural conceptualization is near to my heart? Now, let me tell you. Um, it is because this reminds me of uh, my dad, architect, environmental planner, Edilberto F. Florentino, who really applied structural conceptualization to its max. He showed me and taught me the principle and the application of structural conceptualization in our practice. And if I may say further that we continue to take you know, advantage of all the benefits that comes from it as we apply it in all our projects. Well, frankly, structural conceptualization is not hard to apply, as many perceive it to be hard. You know, it's just a matter of uh, putting it in the office system. Now to add, my dad and I, you know, were very, very happy when we saw the inclusion of the word structural conceptualization in the Architecture Act of 2004. And that I give credit to my dad, architect, environmental planner, Edelberto F. Florentino Lican. All right. After that trivia I just uh, shared to you, now allow me now to share my thoughts on the word structural conceptualization. Okay? All right. Um, by the way, you will also read the, the word structural conceptualization in the general practice of architecture and in the scope of the practice of architecture. And I will be uh, presenting these areas in my future videos, okay? And I can't wait to present those videos soon. Okay, now, now to open this, right? I would say that structural com uh, conceptualization, you know, is a process being spearheaded by the architect of record. 
in collaboration, of course, with his technical team in achieving a sound structure regardless of the shape and form of the proposed building. Actually, the practice of architecture, even from the old, do structural conceptualization. Well, this action was based uh, on old books, histories, and old practices. And, uh, well, in the current scenario, some practitioners nowadays are shying away from it, saying that this is the role from, for another discipline, which I strongly object. Those, you know, those colleagues who assign this process to other disciplines, I don't know, maybe for certain reasons. But for me, therefore, I say that structural conceptualization should be part and parcel in the design process under the leadership of the architect of record. And we should not give it away to other technical disciplines. So you see, the structural conceptualization plays a big role in the creativity aspect of the project, especially in regards to the form, the shape, and the function of a building, right? And that goes as well to the soundness of the building. In fact, if I may add, Structural conceptualization is the foundation in coming up with good design outputs. Now, let me just share this to you, all right? You know, in our office, the assigned architect of record of a particular project calls upon all the technical team of that particular project to discuss and uh, what? brainstorm possible concepts or design of the project in totality and somehow gives the general direction of all the technical professionals about the design of the project. And this process involves the matters in design such as balance, symmetry, contrast, and all its elements and components of the building and this would help achieve a coherent aesthetical form with a sound structure in coordination of course with the environmental and physical element of the project now let me now continue my sharing on what we do in the office all right just for references now the architect of record is responsible in recommending the locations the shape and the forms on all engineering elements in the project that would ensure visual harmony within and outside the building of course because we believe that this is the main task of the architect of record all right yeah so let's continue now to the next one number six architectural firm means a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation registered with the proper government agencies. You know, an architectural firm is a professional establishment that allows the professional or professionals for that matter to conduct businesses with their clientele. And also, an architectural firm has the capacity and the authority to partner with other technical professionals. But please take note on certain provisions in this act that tells us some limitations. And that is indicated actually in section 37 of this act. And you know, I'm so excited to get into that in my future videos, right? Okay, but anyway, to continue, an architectural firm can employ manpower to deliver its services to all its clientele. And definitely, all architectural firms must be registered under the Securities and Exchange Commission. 
and of course other government agencies where it is required to register. And equally important, by the way, is that all architecture firms must pay all necessary taxes and assessments imposed by the local and national government. Now let's move on to number seven, authorship. It refers to the author or authors of a set of architectural plans or specifications who are in charge of their preparations, whether made by them personally or under their immediate supervision. As we all know, authorship is used to refer to a person or persons who originally wrote something and publish it in any forms like books, articles, and other means. Now in architecture, the word authorship, as described in this act, simply means that the architect of record is the main designer and the main person who takes the lead role in the design aspect of the project. From the areas of conceptual design to the production of it, such as the architectural plans and its specification, among others, of course. Well, we can get deeper on authorship as we go to section 32 and section 33 on my future short videos on RA9266. Now, this will be another reason for you to watch this RA9266 series, okay? So, watch that. All right. So let's now go on to the next one. Number eight, board. Refers to the Professional Regulatory Board of Architecture. I could not be saying much on this item because the entire article is dedicated on this subject. And in fact, this will be in my upcoming short videos that will cover Article 2, Professional Regulatory Board of Architecture. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one. Number 9, Commission, means the Professional Regulation Commission. So, um, the Professional Regulation Commission is the main government agency, you know, who oversees and regulates all professionals in the Philippines. Well, this government agency with their respective regulatory boards gives licensure examinations and also the agencies that issues professional licenses and has the power to revoke it, right? In other words, my dear friends, this is the government agencies that takes care of all the professional practitioners issues and concerns in the Philippines. Now let's move on to number 10, service agreement, means a duly notarized written contract or equivalent public instruments stipulating the scope of services and guaranteeing compensation of such services to be rendered by an architect registered and licensed under this act. All right, service agreement is one of the most important documents in the practice of architecture and all those who render services for that matter, right? Okay, now because this service agreement is the document that spells out all the who's, the why's, the what, and the how's in regards to all matters regarding the owner or owners, and the architect of record. Now, in layman's term, this is a written document between a number of parties that lays down who will be involved in that particular activity with their respective responsibilities, indicating the scope of works, the methods and terms of service fees or probably compensations, 
and of course the duration of it and many other details that are in that written document you know that's too long to mention and uh you know i may set a separate video just to talk about service agreement because there are a number of areas in the practice of architecture that has certain specifics and details in the service agreement and this may help others on what should be in those service agreements if you are good with this idea please put your comment below and i will see if there is a need for me to come up with a short video just for this okay now to continue it would also uh, you know always be best to indicate specifics in the service agreements rather than vague written document you know why because vague statements in an agreement or in a contract would mostly end up with what misunderstanding which i said from my previous video that we don't want that to happen to our project okay all right so now let's move on to number 11 integrated and accredited professional organization means the existing official national organization of all architects of the philippines in which all registered filipino architects shall be members without prejudice to membership in other voluntary professional associations you know my dear friends i will not be dealing much on this item you know why because there is an entire section that talks about this item but let me just say that the current integrated and accredited professional organization of architects or better known as ayapoa is the united architects of the philippines again this is a good reason for you to watch my future videos and wait until we reach section 40 all right okay number 12 continuing professional development refers to a sustaining and progressive learning process that maintains enhances or increase the knowledge and continuing ability of architects now first of all the continuing professional development is also known as cpd in the professional circles in the philippines i'll just say that the continuing professional development is a form of educational and learning method or program available for professionals after completing their academic requirement and passing the board examination right well actually this has a specific section in this act and i will again discuss it there once we reach section 28 continuing professional development of this architecture act of 2004. please watch that short video in the future okay all right so this time i will be posting number 13 dti shall mean the department of trade and industry well this is the first abbreviation we encounter in section three okay all right so based on my knowledge the department of trade and industry is one of the executive branch in the philippine government and the department of trade and industry is primarily the what agency responsible to promote regulate and monitor the growth of the philippines industry and trade now for more information about the department of trade and industry please visit their official website okay uh, you know they have tons of information about their department all right so moving towards the last you know item i'll post it here uh, the last item section three which is number 14 sec shall mean the securities and exchange commission 
Well, the Securities and, Ex- and Exchange Commission is a government agency that looks after or regulates the buying and the selling of securities uh, exchanges and uh, also the activities of all registered uh, what, securities what, brokers, dealers, investment advisors, and uh, mutual funds. And this is where corporation, companies, or firms, establishment from single proprietorship to corporation register their business firms or establishments, right? And again, for more information about the Securities and Exchange Commission, please visit their official website as well, right? Well, we have finally finished Section 3, Definition of Terms under Article 1, General Provision of the Architecture Act of 2004. And this section has covered three short videos that's RA9266 Part 3, RA9266 Part 4, and RA9266 Part 5. And now, we can now move on to a new article entitled Article 2 Professional Regulatory Board of Architecture of the Architecture Act of 2004 and this will be in our next video. By the way, my dear friends, if you happen to like this video, please do not forget to press those like button. And if you wish, you would leave a comment in the comment box, you know, below. (laughs) That's right there. And I'll appreciate it very much if you could possibly, you know, share these short videos we have at All About Shelters, to whom you think this video would be of great help for them. Okay? And I'm sure they'll appreciate it very much. And if you haven't subscribed to this uh, YouTube channel yet, entitled All About Shelters, please do press that subscribe button and uh, notification bell right there. No? Uh, it's just right there at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> so that you would enjoy us, you know, and um, you, you could join us rather in this channel where you could uh, watch some issues and concerns about the built environment, you know, in our future videos. And for your reference, uh, I will be posting some links below for you to press those and watch my other videos as well. Okay? All right. And thank you in advance for doing so. Again, this is architect Edric Marcosi Florentino your host for All About Shelters and see you on my other videos. Bye for now.